Hi there, I'm just recording a short video to show what I'm up to at the moment, which is um, a comparison between uh, Napoleon's later campaigns rules by Marcus Stumpner. You can see a uh, revised 2018, um, so the uh, update set of rules that have been implemented to, they started as, a, as an alternative to Napoleon's, I think it's Last Battles, which is a Zucker um, release using that kind of grand tactical stroke operational kind of hybrid um, rules and uh, have also been fitted to work with the loosely named Bonaparte rules um, which includes the Battle of Ekmal, um, the Battle of Abensburg uh, and some others in the Strategy, Tactics and Wargamer magazines. So um, this is a uh, Illustrate uh, the maps for the Battle of Ekmal. Um, you can add Arvensburg to the map down here, and Marcus includes um, a third map, which I, I think it's over here. <laughs> Maybe it's further up there. I'm not sure. Um, so you can sort of play a grand campaign that way. And uh, um, essentially, um, for the Napoleon's later campaigns rules, you only need the map. Um, uh, and everything else is is redone, although it's obviously it's playing the same situation. Now, so uh, here's the counters, print and play counters, where you have uh, unit strength, morale, and uh, movement here, and they are stepped. So, for example, this seven strength will go down to four, and then it will have a th another step bringing it um, down to something like a two when there's these huge divisions. Um, that compares with the original uh, counters here, which um, just list uh, their unit and then, oops, uh, if you can see it, got it underneath here, and then um, each unit has a listing here and then it has a strength which you mark off, so up to 12 strength points. Um, and like there's one, two or three strength points in battle. So it's quite interesting because um, in comparison to the Zucker titles, uh, Napoleon's Last Battles and so forth, um, this is a, a traditional uh, combat system. I think his main idea was that he didn't like the combat CRT there, so he revamped that, made it attritional instead of just uh, essentially a lot of retreat results in the original one. Um, and then he's added in an uh, order system a la Napoleon's, the NVS Napoleon Brigade series. Um, so it's kind of a very similar version of that, where, where you have um, uh, you have to uh, let me show you. So you have um, in this the overall commander in this case Davu has a court leader as the overall commander for the French issues uh, an order to Montbrun at nine o'clock. It will be received at eleven, and then. I've been rolling twice for it since uh, since eleven o'clock to see if he's or if he um, complies with it, and he's been sort of delaying each turn. This one was completed perfectly, so that goes in. These ones were um, ordered uh, within sort of earshot of Davu, so they immediately are received. And uh, there's one that the French have um, attempted. Uh, and then the orders are such things as attack, delay, probe. So it's a little bit more um, uh, sort of... Uh, th there's more types of orders than the Napoleonic's Brigade series. Um, and so they're sort of more discreet rather than sort of the more open-ended MBS type orders, although very similar style in... Um, how you write them, you have to tie down exactly where you go, and it's you know 10 um, MPs forward. So, if you want to march from here to to here, you have to write from here to here to here to here. So, you can't you know interpret your order all the way around there or all the way around there. You sort of have waypoints, what so forth, like that. And you can um, have orders where you say um, march to so and so and then attack from there to so and so. Um, so, you, again, it's sort of more, f um, in a way, less flexibility for, than the NBS because it's more prescribed, but there's more flexibility in the sense that you can sort of, um, 
uh, join orders together, um, make orders sequential in a fashion which is a bit harder to do in the course, sort of more freeform MBS way. So um, what I'm doing is in the sense of a comparison in this and it's actually um, the first scenario um, of the standard ECMOL game and then it's uh, he, he, uh, the Napoleon's later campaigns NLC rules echo the same scenarios and then add some more with his extra map and so forth. Um, so essentially sort of he's used the scenarios, the situation, he's done a bit of his own research because there's some differences um, but you can essentially compare completely the original Ekmal game with the um, Marcus's um, new Napoleon at later campaign rules, you know, scenario for scenario, situation for situation, on the same map, within the same sort of time period. So, um, and it's very interesting. What I did is I've only played, I've played uh, Albensburg, uh, two or three uh, scenarios of that, enjoyed it a lot, and I've just played one of Ekmal. These are the starting setup for the French, um, the Austrians are to start off board, they come in sort of here, here, and about here, something like that. So they come in the same places um, in Napoleon's later campaigns as well. Um, but the first thing you might notice is that you see the f blue units, the French, there are a few down here. There's actually less of them. So uh, in w w when you have, say, like a division here, St. Hilaire, um, I'm not quite sure how each game has broken them down um, because it's sort of not boldly um, stipulated. So, you know, the sense is, is that, OK, this is a division and these are brig two brigades of infantry um, then some horse artillery and uh, divisional artillery there. Um, but then when you go to here, you might find that um, St. Hilaire's division is represented by four infantry units or three infantry units and then um, one artillery and one cavalry. So I find there's one to one on the artillery and the cavalry units, but the infantry um, will either be represented um, by the same amount in, the, 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 in these rules or, or less units. So it makes it unclear whether these ones represent brigades or these represent the actual brigades or if these represent more historical groupings, so uh, I, I won't bother to sort of figure out, I should maybe should have done it early, but just for argument's sake, say St. Hilaire is this um, grouping over there. Um, in Marcus's rules, uh, we've got two, two infantry brigades, so one would be there and one would be there, um, but then in um, Keith Poulter's Ekmal original game rules, um, you've got another one there. Let, let's forget that one. I don't think that would have been in it. And so the question is, is is this based more historically that there were, you know, say a regiment um, and then two regiments, a whole brigade, two regiments and another regiment there, say, and that's how they were originally camped or, you know, uh, situated. So it, I, I'm unclear on that. You, you know, what's the decision in the um, counter mix for this game and the counter mix for this game? So I, I, you know, I can't speak to that, but the first thing to notice is that you do have less units um, in these rules. Now, is that a good or bad thing? Well, it, it just makes things different. And again, the other sort of major thing is, as I pointed out, some of these might have sort of 12 strength points, and you might mark off three maximum, say, for in a combat. So it would take at least, say, four combats to knock one of those down. Well, in... Um, these rules, the strongest units have three steps, so that's three you know, unfavourable combats to eliminate that unit, and many more of them will only have two steps, whereas they might be represented, say, five strength points there, and you might only lose one strength point per combat in this, so a two-step unit in this game might last five battles, say, in this game. So what that means is, you know, already you've got less units, um, so it's kind of like... Uh, you have to be more careful about where you go. You can't send, say, one, let's say one unit down here and one unit down this road. You've only got one unit, whereas in that game you had those two. So you have to decide which road um, that unit is going to go down. So not only do you have that, but also, say, then you do go down that road and it, and it's 
eliminated in combat, that's it. Whereas the other um, fellow from these rules could well have lasted longer. Um, it might it got increasingly gobbled up more easily the weaker it became, but still, the units can last longer and there's more of them in this version of the rules. So um, that's neither a plus or minus, it just means the decisions in this are different from this one. In that one, um, well, you, you, you'll see, and we'll get to that in a bit. Then um, another point to make is, yes, in um, this takes hourly turns. And this takes half hourly turns or, or thereabouts. Um, so you have double the time in this um, to, to move. And that was really interesting, I found, because in here, infantry kept no, will move four movement points. Here, infantry move four movement points. And yet the time scale is double the, the time scale in this game. Why is that? Um, it's strange as well because it, it, uh, you can move faster on the road. So you can move three hexes for two movement points uh, with these rules. For here on the main roads, you can move two hexes for one movement point. So um, I don't know. That, so then that's four hexes for two movement points. Okay, sorry, sorry, I got the wrong. Yeah, so you could actually, in this game, you can move faster on the road. So maybe that's where it pans out, that here you can move faster on the roads, although the main roads are few and far between. Um, I, I think what it must have got mixed up with is, is here, you can, on the trails, you can move two hexes for one movement point. Here, on the trails, you will move one hex. So, you know, you only really need the trails when you're moving through wooded terrain and so forth. But then it's slower in this in this game to move over the rough terrain. Um, here, rough terrain is just one movement point, whether you're going up or down slope or whatever. You only slow down really in forests and marshes and going over rivers. Um, so that's a difference. You know, it, it's... I can't say one's better or worse, but it's slightly different and it gives different results. So this is a slightly slower moving game um, in my uh, playthrough. Of, 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 I've played this scenario with these units already. And essentially the French sort of moved around here and were able to successfully defend these. In this game, they just did not have enough movement. They've got... Um, you can see to this point, uh, these ones were able to sort of slip past before um, the Austrians could get up. But essentially there's a meeting engagement about halfway in the board. Um, with this uh, that set of rules, the French could slip in before the Austrians could reach them because the French could move um, significantly faster. Also they have forced march rules, which adds an extra two movement points with a risk of disruption. Um, don't have that forced march here. Uh, it may be an optional rule, and um, maybe I should have checked it out, but I don't remember it. Sorry, it's the first time I've used these rules, so I'm still learning them. But um, anyway, just the fact that these can move um, doubly fast on the uh, trails makes a huge difference on this map. Because, okay, here you can move fast on the roads, but you have a main road here, and and a main road here, and that's it, really. The rest is all trails. So, um, yeah, and you've got half the number of turns uh, for for this game, double the number of turns for this game, because they're on four movement points in half an hour. These fellows are on four movement points in an hour. There's a huge difference, so it's very interesting to see, you know, sort of ponder the design decisions from... Uh, different designers. So um, what I'm going to do, I won't talk about it really much more now, those are sort of the main points that I've come across. Um, uh, there's one last one which I'll speak to in a minute, but what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to um, play out, so, uh, so, so this is my, my sense of my comparison between these two game systems. The next video I'm going to use the, uh, the later campaigns rules um, to play uh, a different scenario and just to uh, sort of do some commentary on that as I'm learning the rules better. But the last thing to say is in this system um, the command control is such that you have leaders so um, every division has a leader so you've got Davao, Davu, sorry, um, 
as the core leader and then you've got the division leaders here and um, in this game you just have the core leaders the divisions do not have leaders um, so in this game Davu, uh, divisions can you, you roll for activation if Davu is on the map and say if his high if Napoleon was on Napoleon would order Davu and then Davu the chain you don't literally have orders but you, if he's in command range then Davu can it can command his fellows in range and everyone will move that are in that command chain if the division leader is outside of range he can roll on his initiative and move and the french are better at that than than um the austrians so they they move more often um gen uh, uh, you, you, you know generally um but the point being that a division can always uh, have a chance to move, even if like the Austrian in this game have one or two initiative, you have to roll one or two on a d6 to move. And the French tend to have um, like four, it's this far or three, so they have a good opportunity of moving. But even so, a, a, a division outside of the command range has an option to move and then you just move them wherever you want. and. Um, Although they have to be within command of their uh, leader to, uh, no, sorry, yeah. So t to move and fight, you have to either be within command range or have that initiative. Even without that, without um, the initiative, you can still move, but you can't go in enemy con uh, zones of control. I think, I can't remember, you think you have half movement. Um, unless you're moving back to to get into command range, but the point being that, that everyone can can do something um, in that game, even if it's a bit limited. In this game, the command works by the order system. So if you have your written order accepted, you just operate according to your order. So if your order is to um, march to here and then attack to here. Um, you just do that until you've completed it and then you await new orders operating under sort of default defence of your final position. Um, but if you don't have, if say you have an order to march from here to here to here and then say to here and you're French and you find Austrians in the way, well your orders are not to attack so you stop outside of zone of control and you just halt there. And you can't do anything, you cannot, in this game you could roll for initiative and then start your own attack. Um, in this game, without the order, you, you, you're you done. Now you can uh, roll for what's called local decision, so according on the leader's rating. But um, a default division, uh, as, as I pointed out, they, they don't actually have leader markers. So for, in this scenario, Davout is the only leader on the French side represented on the map. So a division um, of, say, three, two or three infantry units and two or three cavalry artillery units has to, 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 is assumed to have a leader rating of one. So um, a, good a good percentage of the time you're going to have a bad move, which means your opponent gives you the order or no effect, and you're very lucky if you'll be able to act locally. Um, even if you're the worst Austrian leader, you're going to act locally. Um, one in six times, is that one in six chance on two d six? I forget. But um, in in this system, you don't get the bad orders. You would just like have a no effect, and even on no effect, you could um perform some kind of movement. In this game, with the no effect, you would just you can uh, defend in place, or you um if you've been pushed out of the place you're defending, you could try and retake it. So um, this system is really about the orders. Um, the sense is, is that I, I, I'm calling um, this scenario here because, um, by the way, the blue uh, markers are the victory points in this system and the red markers are the victory points in, in this system. So you can see this system doesn't have to worry about this, whereas this system did. And that makes sense because they had the movement to get to there. And in both the versions of the scenario, the French have to protect all those victory points, keep, and the Austrians just have to take any one of them to, to gain um, victory. Um, those just indicate two, excuse me, two towns which uh, Marcus uh, claims uh, uh, should be on the map at that, at that point, which weren't on this original map. 
Um, so I'm calling it here because the French, um, they've got uh, Gudin's uh, division are defending this um, town here and the Austrians are trying to move up to take that point. Um, you would have thought they would have given orders to take that point, but they have at-start orders, so the, both sides had at-start scenario orders, and I just kind of blindly followed them for a bit. So the Austrians came up here towards here, um, trying to take Abak, as the original orders said, which is fine because, you know, then you don't have to worry about Charles trying to issue them an order. The closer he is, the easier it is, and he started somewhere down here. Um, but the French needed... Uh, these guys initially halted because they had march orders, no attack. So they were trying to march down to here and on to here. So they initially halted. It took some time to give them an order. And then I finally, um, given St. Hilaire, um, who came from over here, an order to attack through. But it's I can just tell it's not ha going to happen quick enough. We just had some French losses here. This is on its last step, the infantry unit under there. The Austrians are strong enough. They're going to easily take Abak, and I don't think um, I can issue an orders. Be you see that the Austrians are here as well. You really need these French to move around to assist the effort here, and they are blocked. So this is essentially out of the game. Um, we started at seven, and we're on um, to this two p.m. We've got one, two, three, four, five more turns, and uh, I don't think these are going to be able to. Um, block these in 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 the fighters. They might be able to, but I sort of I was ch choosing this as a learning game as a comparison between the systems. I want to go on to a, a different scenario after this. Um, uh, so yeah, that's that's where we are. So what I find is that this game it's more about it's more fluid in the sense that. Everyone's moving each turn. So everyone can can do some movement, if you want, and um, within the chain of command, you just have to check that things are within sort of you know your overall commander to your division to 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 your core to your division commanders, and they can do a lot of what you want them to do. Um, in here, it's all on the order. So. The ants follow their orders, and then when they get to a, a branch in their path, they just stop and sort of start milling around. Or you know, you can imagine them running back from saying, "What do we do? What do we do? What do we do?" Until you manage to send out another order. So, it takes a completely different mindset, and that you have to sort of be thinking ahead. Say, "Ah, oh, I think the French that." As the French commander, I should have thought, oh, I think the Austrians are going to come here, so I should have ordered a vu. You know, two hours before. Uh, oh, sorry, order St. Hilaire two hours before when he's here to quickly move over here because originally he was sort of planning to come down this way and and attack um, that uh, or something like that. So with this one, it's fluid and you can react um, from the situation turn to turn. With this um, system, you have to think ahead a lot more and it's a bit of a pain while you're trying to learn the system i mean you can play the system without the orders um completely you, there's also a version where instead of writing orders on the order sheets you just have chits so you put a chit down with the order and um, i haven't really looked at that um if it works on the compliance table and so forth um but uh, uh yeah oh, interesting thing that the combat system is a bit more similar in the in in this game both sides could take a loss in combat it is odds based but um because of the attritional late nature um both sides could take uh, damage in a combat and it's similar in uh, the, these marcus's rules in that both sides you roll on the fire table so if you both have strength of 6 um, on a 7 on 2d6 you, you're each taking one hit but you can see one hit in this is a f step loss which is a lot more grievous than um, the m even more traditional combat system here so this system in combat is more like this system than it is like the Napoleonic's last battles of the Zucca type system which it was originally designed to offer an alternative to so uh, yeah it's interesting to compare these systems to each other um, 
I think that's enough. If you have any questions, I, I could try and respond in the comments. But I think the next video I will do um, will feature uh, from Napoleon's later campaigns, scenario E2, the Battle of Ekmore. It says day one, but I'll do the whole thing. There's, there's day scenario E3, I think it's day two. Scenario four is um, of the whole two days. And this, which you've just been looking at, is the Battle of Teugenhausen, the 19th of April. Don't know where Teugenhausen is. <laughs> There we go, that's it for now.